Hi, I'm Rich at New Life Scientific. And today I just wanted to cover a little bit about the, the procedures that we do on our ultra low freezers and also some of our other cascading refrigeration units that deal in ultra cold temperatures. And uh, just kind of want to go through a checklist that we've created here to really ensure that the products that we're sending out are really superior and it's not going to give you any problems for a long time. And uh, that way you can get a, an idea of how we proceed through you know, the cascading, specifically the ultra low freezers. And what I mean by ultra low freezers is when you're getting into negative temperatures of um, negative 80 Celsius or 120 Fahrenheit. And if you look over here, I've got uh, an ultra low right now opened up, the panels are off. And I've, I've actually changed the compressor in this one here. And you can see there's actually two compressors in an ultra low system. And basically that's what they call the cascading system. And that's what really creates your, your uh, cryo freezing temperatures. But there's a little bit more work entailed when you deal with cascading two compressor systems. It's not your typical refrigeration systems and many people don't understand um, the differences. So I'm going to explain a little bit of some of the things that maybe um, what we look for when we get them in. And this one here, obviously, it had a bad compressor in it. And this is what the, is the low side. This is the, the, you know, the sensitive side, which actually does the cooling in, in the cabinet. The first compressor over here is what they call the high side. It only is simply cooling the second stage. Its job is to take the heat from this one and move it to this one. The job of this, the low side is to take the heat from the cabinet, move it from this compressor, to this compressor and then ultimately blow the heat out into the room through the, um, the condenser. So um, what I want to do is kind of walk you through when we get a, a system in like this, you know, obviously this one had a bad compressor, but a lot of systems such as this one over here, it was working great. There was nothing wrong with it. The temperatures were getting good, but we still want to go into the system. We still want to pull everything off and really look at it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our, our five senses, um, specifically the four. I don't normally taste things, but um, I'm always apt to get, get a taste of something in my mouth when it's not working right too. But, but uh, so visually inspecting, uh, first thing we see is a lot of corrosion in the refrigeration um, lines. These are all copper lines that get extremely cold, especially this low stage compressor here them temperatures come down and they drop. And if you don't have good insulation, like you see here, this came off of this unit right here. Now, what has happened here is when the insulation breaks down, you start getting condensation right here. You can see the pitting going on in this compressor. And this is not that old of a system here. And this was actually a the fault of the manufacturer not um, doing a good enough job of really sealing this area off. So first thing we came in and we're, you know, we're wire brushing all the loose stuff off and then we're using a rust inhibitor and I haven't went that far yet because I wanted to show you just how um, dangerous this can get. Both of these compressors both had this. They both look the same way. And so what we're doing is we're cleaning it all off and we're going to um, get this sealed up a lot better than what it was at the factory. We have special glues that we use that um, will eliminate any kind of moisture getting into this. Because this is just metal, it'll rust. The copper lines won't. It's just right in this area here that is, is overlooked so many times. Now what happens is that will rust a hole right through there and it'll leak. And then the compressor is useless. And then you're dealing in thousands of dollars in repair costs. So like I said, visual, we've seen that. We've seen the insulation needs replaced. We've seen this needs to be fixed and dealt with before it gets any worse. The next thing we're looking at was we're looking at sound and we're listening for any abnormal sounds in the compressors and we're touching, we're feeling vibrations and heat, any excessive heat, vibrations coming from the compressors or from any of the lines or fans or anything that's mechanical under here. Um, the next thing that we're um, doing is using our sense of smell. Is there any burnt smells or is there any um, refrigerant smells that we're detecting or oil smells coming from down here? Then once we 
um, go past our just our simple senses. Then we, um, I'll come back over here, and then we're going to use gauges um, like this. We're going to test the amp draws. What the amp draws do is it detects whether a compressor is starting to fail because it's pulling too, too many amperages. You know, the, the efficiency of it is breaking down. It might have a bearings that are getting weak. Oil is perhaps breaking down and causing inefficiency and causing high amp draws. The next thing that if we need to get into a system a little deeper is what we're gonna do is some pressure tests. Um, specifically when we got to break into a system like we did here to change a compressor, um, get the compressor changed, and then do a, um, a high pressure um, test using gauges like this and then also uh, temperatures. And then once we identify that it passes the pressure test, we are at this point filling in information of everything we've done here. You can see we got the amp draws, uh, two different compressors, and the, some of the temperatures and, and, um, and then our testing where we did testing on uh, pressure tests down here. And, uh, and then when we get down to doing our evacuations down here again, um, because the evacuation on an ultra cold system, specifically the low side, is very important. And a lot of technicians out there don't realize how important it is. Because on a, on a low side compressor, you cannot have any moisture in the system. And it specifically has to be boiled out, perhaps for days at a time, and doing multiple nitrogen purges. And what a nitrogen purge is, is you have nitrogen in a bottle, which is a really dry gas. Um, I would lock this down while it's under a vacuum here. I would hook my nitrogen up and pull nitrogen back into the system, completely fill it into the system because you, we don't want any ambient air going back into it because then you're just going to contaminate it again. So then we would push air, nitrogen into it and what they call a purge is you're just slowly running nitrogen back through the system, trying to absorb any uh, molecules of moisture at all and try to drag them out of the system. And then we do that three times and we do a, a, a vacuum, usually for about four days to really boil out any other moisture in it. And right now, as you can see, we're pulling really low vacuums on this system. We're getting down to where we're getting down into the 50 microns. And this is way below what you would do on a standard refrigeration system. This is an ultra low cold freezers that cannot have any moisture in them. So we have to be guaranteed that this thing will hold for at least under 200 microns for 30 minutes before we can proceed with recharging the system. And that's why it's so hard when you have a service tech that goes out in the field, he's trying to get it rushed through it, get it done in a day, and there's no way that you can ever get um, a system like this done in a day the way it should be without having problems down the road. That's why an ultra, ultra low freezer needs to come into a shop and be done the, prop, done, done the proper procedures like this. But like I said, um, them are some of the things in, that we go through and verify the compressors, we verify the insulation, we verify the temperatures, and you can see down here, this one here has just gone through here. This is another ultra low, been back um, in our shop. This technically isn't our refrigeration shop, but, but this is our high ceiling area where we can lift up these tall units and give us plenty of room to work on them so that our guys can get in there without laying on their stomachs. But I'll throw in a couple shots of our refrigeration room in this video so you can see it. And I also want to point out too, we do a lot of um, freeze dryers that deal in ultra cold temperatures. And you can see this is a Virtus um, 25EL. It has two compressors again, very industrial. And, and again, there's a little bit of insulation that we'll do here and, and get fixed here and things like this. Because like I said, um, we don't want any rust coming in and what we don't want moisture coming and dropping down here and start corrosion on the machine. But like I said, we've been doing this for um, a long time and we're very um, adamant about getting these systems really working good and back to manufacturer, ma manufacturer specifications. But just a, like I said, a, a simple video to uh, just build your confidence in knowing what we're doing with these machines as they come in. 
like I said, they could be working fine and, and no problems, but we're still pulling the panels off. We're looking, we're testing, we're making sure there's no problems down the road. We're putting brand new batteries in it. We're putting new air filters over the, the condenser there and just getting it, like I said, really um, thoroughly gone over. But I think that's about it. Um, like I said, if you have any questions and you want to know more about our ultra low freezers or even our freeze dryers or other ultra low equipment that we deal in, um, don't hesitate, give us a call. We're here to answer any questions. Thank you for watching.